the main reason why I think a lot of people are waking up to uh, the ills of Ilhan Omar. Let me go ahead and transition. The title of this article, ladies and gentlemen, says Ilhan Omar funneled another 150K to alleged consultant group. And as you guys know, her consulting group uh, was her boyfriend, right? Uh, the one that she broke up the marriage. And it says this, ladies and gentlemen, Representative Ilhan Omar paid another 150000 to Tim Minette, political consulting group in Three months after the post revealed allegations that the pair were romantically involved, records show. And with everything here now, it totals up to $370,000. I mean, almost a half a million she, she's shoveling out. What's going on here, Barry? I think mm -hmm. they're just criminals. And, <laughs> uh, Absolutely. You know, like we just talked about, the, there are very strict federal laws, Jermaine, and there should be. If you raise money, especially once you're in office, you have a piggy bank that never goes empty. You control, I mean, I want your people to hear this, billions and billions of dollars. At least you can influence that. You have the ability to introduce laws that no one pays attention to that you can ram through. Special interests give you money in the hopes that you'll support their bridge to their dairy farm or whatever. Everybody knows a story like that, right? You know, bridge mm -hmm. to nowhere kind of stuff. Ilhan Omar has so many stories floating around about her. Did she come to the country illegally? Did she marry her brother? Did she divorce her brother to marry someone else? Did she divorce that guy to have an affair with someone else? Did she then have an affair with her campaign consultant who, according to that person's wife, was sleeping with the congresswoman, who was then funneling money out of her campaign funds to his company to the tune of a third of a million dollars in the past year? This is out in the open, Jermaine. This is not speculation. It happened. What's being looked at now in this case is this is egregious as well. Let me tell you why. You can't spend money on non-campaign expenses. Mm -hmm. If you're giving wildly inflated numbers to your lover who you're sleeping with, who might be then taking care of you, wink, wink, wink. <laughs> you can't do that. Why? Because you're open to influence peddling and you're taking money from an unsuspecting American public who thinks they're giving money to you for your campaign when in reality they're giving money to you for Gucci handbags and mm -hmm. really nice shoes and a beautiful apartment and so on. And that's what people are so upset about. I could tell you in regards to your favorite congresswoman from next door, uh, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib in Michigan, there are a line of people lining up to challenge both those congresswomen, mm -hmm. both inside the Democrat Party and from the Republican side of the aisle because voters are really, really upset, Jermaine, and I'm not telling you they shouldn't be upset. This isn't just policy. This is illegal activity most probably. The question is, will it receive, this is my big unknown, and I don't know the answer to what I'm going to post right now, is it going to receive enough publicity from the liberal media that can be exposed to the voters in the district to say, hey, you guys, you elected a crook. Why don't you look at somebody else in your own party in the primary? Or look at somebody else from the other side of the aisle. Don't send a criminal back to Washington. And hopefully, both the districts will do that. In Minnesota, 
which, by the way, at least you have a good football team. My football team lost again last <laughs> night. <laughs> again. Um, and in Michigan as well, because the people of Michigan deserve better and the people of Minnesota deserve better. What I can see is that Ilhan Omar, in a sense, is only worried about uh, her life and her uh, her relationship. It doesn't look like she's really into governing and making sure that she's actually doing the right thing for the people in her district. And when we have people like Ilhan Omar um, who are this corrupt, um, you would think that the people on the left would say, you know what, this is a bad look for us, right? You, you would think that common sense light bulb would just, you know, click on like, hey, these people are really making us look bad. But, Barry, but, I don't... Wait a minute, let me stop you. You're, Jermaine, you're right. You're 100% right. Mm -hmm. Liberal or conservative, progressive or libertarian, you don't want somebody within your own group to dump on your philosophy. Get the best quality representation you can get yeah don't elect somebody that's stealing from you and and, and it's it's so crazy that um the the left that never calls these people out no matter how evil they are no matter you know how scandalous they are and let me tell you something ilhan omar she's a very scandalous woman very scandalous woman. I mean, you went and slept with somebody's husband. You broke up a marriage. Where the, wait, the wait a minute. Said, well, wait a minute. Well, she was married to somebody else, and he was married to somebody else. I, it's the most uh, low life thing you can do, Barry. I mean, these people are low lives. And and why would you want a person in my eyes with that type of character when they can't even remain? Um, you know loyal in their own relationship with their husband how do you uh, how do you think they're going to remain loyal to you as a uh, uh you know a person who's serving you in your district you know i i've never thought about the question like that and i really like what you're saying you know the the fundamental background and basis in religion is the family and if the family doesn't matter and the person you made vows with that you sleep with every night doesn't mm -hmm. matter, then why would you care about the person down the street, around the corner, and across town? Well, honestly, Jermaine, you're right, because you wouldn't. I think that, you know, this will be her last hurrah, and we have to make sure we stop her before she gets any type of pension. We got to. She she can't get a pension, Barry. I, I'm, I'm fighting against it. Well, God bless you for that, but there's, there, there have been studies after studies after studies for a long time, Jermaine, that say a certain number of people walk in on election day and they have a compulsion to vote for the incumbent mm -hmm. thinking that, well, that person got elected before, and I'm not really sure who it is, but they're already the governor, the mayor, the senator, the congresswoman. So I'll just vote for them again. And that's why it is so hard to defeat an incumbent. Besides that, the incumbent can use federal money, federal yeah. campaign funds, to get themselves reelected. In other words, they use your money to convince you to vote for them again. And a person challenging has a much harder time to overcome that. Now, in the case of Ilhan Omar, and as we discussed a few minutes ago, Rashida Tlaib, they've got so many violations going on and so many policy statements that are just absurd and quite frankly, anti-American. I'm hoping that people pay enough attention to walk into the polling booth going, oh, I know who I don't want to vote for. Who else is there? And that's the way they vote.